on this episode, we build a trailer for my race car and install some really sick front suspension. We just made a trip to Northern Tool. What did we purchase, you may wonder? A trailer. The trailer that we will pull behind Roxy for Rocky Mountain Race Week 2.0. I'm real excited because when we did Drag Week last year, we used one of those platforms that goes into the trailer hitch and it was terrible, so bad. So it's gonna be really cool to have a trailer and actually be one of those race cars that's pulling a trailer. I'm stoked about it. Aaron is pulling up in the Super Duty right now. I'm gonna swing the doors open and we are going to unload our trailer. Yeah, it would have been great if we had been able to drag it home behind the truck, but it's not in that shape or form quite yet. Yeah, this is one of those some assembly required kind of situations. It's gonna be fun though, and it was only 350 bucks. Yeah. That's worth it. Put a trailer together for that. <laughs> Get all of our trailer parts out. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a trailer that you buy at Ikea. <laughs> exactly. If you could buy a trailer at Ikea, it would be like this. Here, I have a sharp object. Well, we got our work cut out for us. Thankfully, we built the race car last year. I wonder where we start. I think we're gonna have to look at the instructions, Aaron. Step one, lay out the front side rails, one FL and one FR. Okay, that one and that one. See if we can find those. First critique of this trailer is that the pieces should be marked. Going through these instructions and trying to figure out what piece is what is so crazy because they all have holes in them and the holes are you know similar in some pieces and different in others. It's quite tricky to figure out which piece goes where. But we're gonna be persistent and we're gonna get this and we'll show you guys once we figure out where what goes. Yeah, that. We have almost completed. We have our frame rails, our front section of the frame rails out. And Aaron has a bolt started over there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm getting ready to stick a bolt in on that corner to yeah. uh, get so, that a little bit secure. So I'm gonna make a point that we just discovered, which may confuse you. The marker light holes have to go to the front of the trailer. They're not talking about those two big holes that are super obvious to see. They're talking about these little tiny screw holes. They're some little bitty holes. Yep. So when you read that, don't get confused because those little tiny holes are the ones that need to go to the front. Yep. All right, get my bolt started.
Alrighty, the trailer is done for now at least. We want to add some sides to it, but right now it is time to move on to other projects in the shop. So we are checking this off the list for now. I'm gonna roll it out of the shop and clean up our floor space. That way we can get ready to move on to the next project. So awesome to have the kids in the shop a little bit wrenching with us. She's the best. All right. Yes, so I am getting ready to embark on a drag racing adventure called Rocky Mountain Race Week. 2.0. Last year we did Hot Rod Drag Week and this year for 2020 it was canceled because of you know why the virus. But the wonderful folks at Rocky Mountain Race Week decided that they would do a second event for all the drag weekers because we were all so bummed out and that is taking place in a couple of weeks. Now the excitement behind this episode is that I have some new suspension components for the front of this car. Last year when we did Drag Week, we focused on rear suspension. We have a nine inch center section, coilovers back there from G-Force, and for the front, I decided to mix it up a little bit. I had been talking to the folks at KW Suspension. My friend Amelia Hartford did a bunch of work with them on her new C8 Corvette. I was like, dude, that suspension looks sick. So I started talking with them and I ordered these custom for Roxy because Roxy is not a factory application. So the car has a 6.7 liter LS motor. So it's the cast iron block, the LQ9 block that is stroked out to 408 cubic inches. So the cast iron block is roughly 80 pounds heavier than the aluminum block. And then atop my 408 is a Magnuson 2300 supercharger. So in addition to the weight of the supercharger, we have the additional coolant system for the supercharger, the inner cooler and the water in that coolant system. So We've got some extra weight in the front of Roxy, so I had to custom order these to be sure that they would withstand and be prepared to hold up the extra weight that Roxy was packing. I am excited to get to work on her and get some fresh suspension components up in the front of this car, and then it will be time to head out on Rocky Mountain Race Week and actually get these things tuned for the strip. Super stoked on that. Let's get to disassembly. a plan as to how I'm going to do this. I've watched a few videos on folks doing suspension work on these cars and honestly it's been so long since I've worked on the suspension that I don't remember the path of least resistance when it comes to doing suspension work. Uh, because I've had this car for so long, the last time we did suspension we did a full Petters Track 2 on the car. I think it was back in like 07. I think I'd had the car for a couple of years and I saved up for some suspension and so this stuff is pretty dang old. I think my plan of attack is I'm going to put my jack stand underneath the, the lower control arm here and try and stabilize it and then I'm going to take the two bolts out that hold the bottom of the strut and see if I can gently let this down to get the strut and coil spring out. We'll see. That one loose. Alrighty, time to attack disassembly on the passenger side.
so much easier with an impact. Wow. <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> we got the second one out. Yay! Oh, when you see me next, it'll be time to install the new parts. The new bushing and mounting plate that Aaron got today at Summit, um, they came with a really tall nylon lock, lock, locking nut. And originally from the factory, they had these more low profile nuts. And so when I went to install the nut on the top of the coilover, I didn't have a ton of threads to work with. So what I did was I started the nut and then I put my wheels and tires on and lowered the car down some to push the coilover up through the strut tower so that I could actually get this nut tight. So now I'm tightening them down. After this, <laughs> we're gonna lower the car down. My coilovers are all the way extended to the top height. So I'll be curious to see how tall she sits so that we can then make our adjustments to our desired ride height. Alrighty, it is a new day and it is time to attack this situation. <laughs> or right there, yeah, this situation. Uh, Roxy's ride height needs to be different and I'm really excited to get to adjusting on these coilovers. Let's do it. I thought that this coil spring was adjusted all the way high, but it's not. We still have probably an inch and a half worth of threads that I could tighten this up and get the car stiffer and taller. Um, so I'm going down with it. I'm going to measure out. Did we, did we say two and a half over here? Two and a half inches, yes. Uh, over here. So I'm going to use my Sharpie and measure two and a half inches down my threads. And then, that's where I'm gonna move my big nut to, my adjustable nut. My coilovers came with 11 pages of instructions as to how to tune these. I'm just gonna go ahead and put it out there that I ain't smart enough to do all this the right way. But I bet you I'm gonna get it enough. So I just read about how to adjust the rebound and now this goes into the bump and the compression adjustment. I'm going to go ahead and trust that KW suspension set all this up the way that I should have it. And the only thing I want to focus on is modifying my ride height. So um, I'm going to get to that, but I'm just kind of scanning this just so that I have a broad knowledge of the adjustabilities and the reasons why you would trying to learn here. Okay, y'all, I'm just going for it. Let's start moving it downward. Okie dokie, I think we're there. Time to put the tires back on and lower it down and see where our ride height falls. So prior to actually checking the tire pressure on this car, <laughs> I could fit three fingers here. Now I can only fit really, I can do two, but I probably, it's probably a, a two and a half. 
Um, and over there is the same. We had low air pressure on this tire like Goober had, so. Let's see what the fender measures out to be. Looks like 26 and a half. Quarter inch lower on this side. We put you in the car and so let's go down for it. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to measure the same with me out of the car. That's funny. You can be leaning while you're racing. It's true. Okay, it's about an inch. About an inch and an eighth. It's a little bit higher on this side. Overall, I am super pleased with my ride height on Roxy. It's time to continue to prep her for race week because we are leaving very soon. We've got to figure out everything that we want to take and load onto the trailer. I wanna get her aligned before we go. There's a handful of things we gotta do before we leave for race week and you guys will see all that on the next episode. Please be sure to like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this content. And if you're new to the channel, please check out the playlist because you can see our lineup of builds like Garfield the Truck and Dot Zen, Aaron's first car. We appreciate you guys watching so very much and we'll see you next time.